some of the uh, instancing, like propagating to quad workflow or whatever. Um, I was just looking at a vellum thing there. But it's basically this kind of idea pretty much to use prim uv to get the source coordinate um, of the grid position. So like this is the uh, grid uh, pods or whatever. Um, and then in this input, I just have a bunch of different um, shapes that I want to instance. So I have different uh, things that I was generating here, like abstract letters or, or um, symbols and stuff. And then this goes through and just randomly gets one and puts it into the, uh, like re refits it or remaps it to, to the individual face or the quad. So yeah, um, I think if you're in the Houdini uh, battle discord, um, you go to the general files, battle files. Um, you can find my scene files for that. Uh, so I did do some tweaks. But yeah, it was the same idea to make these buttons and uh, a lot of these like tools and stuff for the, the panel um, did the same kind of workflow. So I think it's pretty good for even like, um, if you ever see the future user interface, FUI, futuristic user interface or whatever, um, it's kind of, you're not really making like a, uh, use, actual usable interface. It's more of just like putting a lot of interesting data in like to a grid or aligned in a precise way. So you might be able to, to make these kinds of interfaces pretty quickly using like the same, somewhat same idea or whatever of a workflow. It's, it's similar to UV like mapping or texturing, but you could apply it to a geometry that's pretty interesting. So yeah, it's all that same kind of idea, I guess. I could have probably done a bit better if I spent more time in shading and did more, uh, some more glows, more intricacies and, and things like that. But uh, it's a pretty, pretty fun thing. <laughs> 45 minutes goes by quick. It's even quicker than the usual cool zone streams and stuff like that. So it kind of was a bit quicker than I was used to. Yeah, and then I was also playing around with, um, I think this is from Wednesday, right? <clears throat> we were going through and playing around with some of this stuff. It was crazy fast, it's like, especially doing, you just get the idea at the very start of it. So you have to do research in like five or 10 minutes. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know, like, I, I guess going into rendering maybe was a bit uh, trying to bite off too much, but. I think it helps. I mean, it's just up to you, like however you want to present it and whatever areas you want to spend the most time in. But yeah, this was the same idea from, um, what was it? Wednesday, I think the second, um, of just attaching the, these things to this guy. This is playing around with that and just increasing the, the amount of, of hairs and, uh, getting pretty cool results. I'm going to keep playing around with that a little bit uh, later. So yeah, we'll get started with the project for today. Um, I might incorporate some of this idea, some of these organic tentacles or, or uh, soft bodies or whatever. Um, where did it go? So my, my starting point, I think today, I'm gonna get one of these, whoa. Get one of these rock scans. I also didn't know the the rules with the battle. Um, like if you could bring in other models, like scanned models or OBJ files that you had on your computer, or like how, how strict they were with that. Cause I know with Hulai, like it was all up to, to what you had. Uh, created yourself. So that's kind of what I was sticking to. All right. 
Yeah, so this guy here, I think, I think it's a guy. Yeah. Um, made some different scans of these rocks. So you could get some on Quixel. I was trying to do Quixel earlier today, but I think my um, free trial expired already. So I'm just gonna go off this. And then uh, also on the uh, resources section of my um, website, I have some other Sketchfab links for, I think they're more statues or whatever. Um, I'm, get, I'm just gonna work with, uh, start with a rock. Uh, geometry is a starting point today. I don't know which which one is which one seems like it could be cool. Let's do this one. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Let me see what I was doing. I think I was just logging in with with Google. All right, I think it's working now. What are your favorite Twitch YouTube streamers? Do I watch Doc, the Doctor Doctor Disrespect? Uh, I I think I've watched him. I tried to watch him one time or something. He was just like setting up a loadout in Call of Duty or something. It was too boring. I gave up. <laughs> um. But yeah, I think I've linked sometimes some of the other Twitch streamers. Um, Isaac, he's been on here a bit doing the uh, his like car headlight breakdown and stuff. Um, this is his account. Um, Trying to think about some other ones. I was just kind of creep around a little bit. Um, Arvid is good as well. Um, XRA is somewhat cool. This this one Shams. She's a pretty good uh, cinema artist, doing like still lifes and stuff like that. Um, Blake, Catherine as well. Just get a good variety of like different art processes. Like, I think Isaac is coming from more of a more motion uh, design, motion graphics background. Um, and then Shams and Blake uh, are coming from more of like a still life, fine art kind of background, or I don't know, more of that kind of direction. So it's just interesting to see different people's uh, workflows and, and styles and stuff like that. Yeah, and then Arvid, he's another uh, um, visual effects artist. I think he's coming from more of a look dev. He still does effects. He'll do like flip flip sims and he was doing a bunch of the Hulai stuff. Um, but I think he's just his specialty or expertise is lighting and look dev. Um, he did a, a pretty good like amber, a bug in, encased in amber tutorial recently. All right, I'm just saving this in downloads. Try to get it, get it in. Extract. All right, I think it's ready. Yeah, I've just been, I don't know, through Twitter or other um, sources, just seeing other people. I think more recently, 
Um, I think Shams was doing streaming for longer than I was, but uh, like Catherine, she was just uh, just started in the last month or so. I think in, in terms of like 3D artists or stuff like that, Twitch is still pretty new for a lot of those people. So some people are picking it up. All right, so we got the rock. Um, then it does come with some additional textures and stuff like that. But we need to do um, really nice rendering of it. Um, does have normals and uh, can get some more detail out of it, I think. You might, I don't know. Do you, I, I guess if you want to, like, um, sometimes I'll do a subdivision, one or two layers. Um, then you could do like attribute from map if you just want to load uh, the UVs, looks like it would be okay. Um, let's get one of these maps going. So like some of the stuff that you can usually do in, in the shader, sometimes it can be better to do it um, just in SOPs, if you're gonna like be adding particles or things like that, you'll know that your uh, geometries are all lining up if you do it, but instead of doing it at render time, if that makes sense. Kind of doing a bad job explaining things. Um, and then to get rid of some of these like seams, I think, you just do vertex split. So this will move the UV attribute from vertex to point. And it will also, um, when you say promote to point attribute, like it will split the vertices or the actual points so that they aren't uh, interpolating between each other. So there it goes. It looks like it did mess up my subdivision. Oof. <laughs> Oof. I don't know what the best way is around that. Um, this might might have to do here with these uh, sharpen edges and corners, like sharpening the corner. Um, we'll just go to. Ooh, not that one. Still don't understand why Houdini treats points and vertices differently. Um, yeah, I, d I don't know. I mean, I can explain like the differences in Houdini between the two of them. I think just in terms of like optimizations and stuff, they, they do it that way. Um, I think basically every other software um, just refers to vertices as points and doesn't ever differentiate between the two or doesn't really give you access to, to changing the two of them. But I, I'm not, uh, I don't have all the research in front of me to be fully prepared to talk about it without, <laughs> without providing maybe some false information. If you do go to the C CG Wiki, um, Matt's, Matt Estella's website, um, I think just under his Houdini um, I don't know what section it's in but he does talk about it somewhere Yeah, I don't know if I can find it right now. Um, let me do a quick search. He has a pretty good. Yeah, I think I found it. 
So this one here points, verts, and prims. Um, this example here of comparing it to like these sales is a pretty good um, way to kind of remember it. Um, but it still is a bit confusing. But basically, the point is just determining the position, like 3D location of it. But then vertices can uh, add additional like connectivity information, like whether it's a shared uh, 3D position or these could be independent. It, it just gets, unfortunately, the way that like Houdini has implemented it, it, it can turn into a bit of a gotcha. Because it's like other 3D software, you don't really have to worry about it as much. Um, but yeah, I think this should be okay for right now. It's possible doing uh, maybe the loop subdivision. This is like just using triangles. Um, this might be a bit a bit better. Maybe that will get rid of. It looks like it still has that. You could try doing views. That might just get back to where we started with that issue. I guess you'd want to find the borders and then mark them as creases, but uh, this I'm just going to try to work a bit more quickly. I'll just live with the uh, those little artifacts. There aren't too many of them. Um, but yeah, the main reason is like in a VOP network. Um, can then do that displacement and bake it in uh, at SOP level or into the geometry before um, before rendering so you know like if you're scattering points or doing other operations you're all synced up in terms of the displacements and, and positions and stuff like that. So I'm just baking in the height map uh, value right now. Maybe go. That should be good enough. I don't know the normals if uh, this one has the option you can do update normals it's a bit better um but yeah i'm not too too worried about everything um could do maybe one more level of detail so just baking the the height map into the actual sop geometry maybe go one more level up like a million points I'm going to go down, back back down one level for right now. We could always increase it later if we want to. All right. So my idea is to have some points traveling along the surface here, kind of bouncing around or something like that. Um, and I'm going to try to use them to like influence um, a vellum or a soft body simulation. We'll do scatter. Maybe have them relaxed quite a bit. How is that baked again? Uh, so this, um, this came with this height map information that's basically the black and white displacement. This might have been where those artifacts were coming from. I don't know if it's already in the map. Um, but this basically came with the some of these extra maps. Um, so traditionally, you would apply them in your shader uh, when you're rendering it. But because I'm going to be scattering points and doing things like that, I want to actually know uh, more quickly, like 
the actual displaced position. So I move the UV from uh, vertice to a point attribute. And then with this attribute buff, just doing kind of what a shader would be doing. So take the UV coordinate to look up the height map texture um, and then displacing along the normal based off of that height value. So I guess it's kind of the opposite of the bake, like it's reverse bake. Um, like traditionally for working with games or whatever, you would have a high resolution asset like this. And then you would be, um, so maybe we'll just say this is apply height map. But yeah, it can be helpful depending on what you're doing for effects. Sometimes you like really have to know where the locations are. So if I wasn't going to do this, um, then when I went to render it, like all of the points would be below the surface or, or things like that. Like you could call it a gem. <laughs> It's a, it's, it's a useful thing to, to, to do. All right. So yeah, just copy, um, to points. Visualize this. Uh, so with the scatter, you output E scale that will just keep track of like generally the, the non overlapping distance of them. So many inside tips you typically don't get from a course. Yeah, I mean, this isn't really a course. It's just a, a discussion, but um, like demos or, or more of workshops, I guess. is uh, The reason I, I don't say it's a course is because um, I, I don't do a good job of like setting, scheduling like landmarks and uh, I don't know, like topics and the schedule, scheduling in that sense, but I think this is a good way to share kind of the, the stuff that you would usually like skip over. You might not get from a more like on the rails uh, defined course. So you could scale radii here. Um, you can also just do it after that. So yeah, now we have some stuff. Bounding box, just so they show up a little bit better. Um, all right. We'll do pop network. Let's do like a simulation. Blur spheres. <laughs> this is kind of back to the blur. Rave, uh, I guess it has its own culture. It's getting into that color scheme with my uh, alien CDJ <laughs> stuff yesterday. The, uh, the rainbow colors, the beads, all that stuff. I, I just set this up for right now to get a uh, bit of contrast or like differentiation between the, the rock. Um, maybe this scale, instead of applying it to the spheres there, um, I'll just multiply it. <clears throat> you could do, um, I guess attribute remap. If you don't want to type vex, you just take P scale and then the new maximum. So this is the same thing essentially as multiplying it by 0.25. You could do some additional like re rearranging. This is kind of like the levels tool in Photoshop. But for right now, I can just do uh, that. And so I'm going to do a simulation just to move the points around. Um, we'll bring in all the geometry just on the first frame start frame of the simulation and uh, let's 
Let's just do the pop force. Basic turbulence. There they go. And they're off. Um, usually just maybe do a bit of the drag to keep things a bit under control. And then I want to keep these constrained to the, the rock shape. Um, trying to think what the best way is to do that. I've done the ray sop in the past. Um, let me try this and see if it works. So I think under collision behavior, if you add the hit attributes, you could try switching this to slide and then adding the rock shape in as a static object. Um, just do merge. Just trying something new, see what happens. In the past, I was doing like a SOP solver with the ray SOP to keep reprojecting the points onto the, the static object. All right, so the SOP path, SOP input path, parent node, um, first input of the parent node. So we got the right one. It's in replay. This might be a bit too slow. I'm guessing you want to do like pop attract um, towards the origin to keep I guess this this is already pretty far from the origin. It's like we're pulling the whoop, pulling the napkin off off of our shape or something. So I, I might just bail out of doing it this way. Um, just do SOP solver. So I can grab this expression, just control C, and then just do object merge, control V. We just have to add one more directory to go up, and then we still get it. And then do array. So this we can just do minimum distance. And then every frame or every time this cooks, it will re just snap these to the nearest position on that rock. So that's already pretty cool. Getting some interesting behavior around the cracks and stuff like that. Um, you could always do like a bit of blur or something. Blur, blur, <laughs> do it all. Um, so if you just want it to go around some of those, maybe you have to turn off the border points. I think it's because I have this templated. Just to update the normals. So just see <clears throat> see what kind of difference we get with that. So they're going like around it a bit easier. I think it's it's more cool with uh, without it. Um. So the other thing we did like during the reaction diffusion uh, cool zone maybe two weeks ago. Um, this separate gas particle separate um so this will make sure that the particles don't touch each other or overlap essentially i think i can just leave it 
the way that it is for right now. Looks like they're still sticking together. Could try doing the distance scale. So it looks like they're staying further apart. With it set to two. I think the force and stuff like that is a bit too strong. Maybe just to increase the air resistance. This is kind of like you're simulating friction. So cool already. <laughs> That's why they call it the cool zone. So then I think increasing this air resistance, um, the turbulence is updating too quickly now. So it's like they keep getting pushed in different directions. Um, and I want that to be slower. So I'll just increase the pulse length. So the pulse length, it's longer, there will be a longer duration before it changes the direction that, that the noise is moving them in. Animated bug models. Yeah, you could do that um, pretty easily, maybe. Jumping around the rock. Cool stuff is standard procedure. Julian, how's it going? Good to see you popping in. I don't know what the, some of this stuff is doing, a, a jitterbug. Um, you could do... I'm just going to turn that off. Maybe if you do a bit more... Sub steps. It has a bit... can, can solve this stuff a bit easier. So yeah, you can already do some, some pretty cool stuff with this. Like if you just do trail... Whoop. Trick me with that one. Trail. Um, I'm going to turn off the other templates. So if we keep the history, you can see we have some interesting... <laughs> Trail is king. Do add um, by ID to connect. Um... Polygons, look at that, by attribute ID, and you can do $F here if you always just want it to go the full, like up to the current frame of your simulation. Got the silly string rock. So I usually use this wireframe because it's a bit quicker to, to build the curves than the poly wire. It does it using like tube and sphere primitives. So it's just quicker to generate that uh, geometry than actually build the, the full mesh or whatever. So yeah, I think sometimes what I've done before, like you do scatter, um, if you make like a really dense point cloud here, um, no spaghetti today, <laughs> the pasta rock. This is, I think it's gonna be a little bit different than uh, then spaghetti, hopefully. <laughs> it's about to be spaghetti. It's kind of the silly string, yeah. Um, so yeah, and then maybe another ray right here. Um, another minimum distance, but then with this one, you could do like a lift, I think. Did it work? Didn't work. So I'll just 
store the normal and then I can do peak so now I can lift them separate them off the surface um, I'm trying to think what the best the best way is that I've done this before. Um, let me see if this works. Looks like it doesn't work. I was trying to snap it to the nearest points, just using the ray. Um, I think I can do it here if I just say, get the point, uh, get a point attribute from this input number one auxiliary input. Um, the point attribute I want to get is position. The point number you can use as near point. So near point um, based off of proximity the, that same auxiliary input, um, the nearest point based off of the current point position. Um, then this is snapping the, the points to the nearest point like that. Um, and then you merge these based off of the ID. And you kind of have some things walking around. I think you can get, you can get a little bit more out of it if you do this point generate. Um, like more legs. Or I, I'm sorry, a prickly. It's a prickly pair. Um, you do point replicate. We'll just do like four. Um, the sphere. You want to copy the source attributes to keep the same ID. Um, maybe I need to do it earlier. There they go. It's kind of a weird, it's like the Geometry Wars or some some game like that. Um, there was the one, one guy on uh, Twitter, I think it was Sasha, Sasha. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. But he had, he made a rock that was, um, there was like a crawly kind of thing on it. It's like a spider. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. But um, other people have made you could make like procedural little walkers and stuff this way. Um, it's a kind of a starting point of an idea, but uh, could could work for something. Maybe with this shape, you have it bigger. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to give up on that for right now. Connect adjacent with uh, 
before they're moving. Then it will look like walkers, like after, with the, oh, with them all together. I, I think I see what you mean. Um, so merge the movers with the static ones. There it goes. <laughs> Maybe the after they're lifted. I think my lift is too much. And then you do add remove unused points. Yeah, that's uh, that's more of what I would, had in mind. There he, there he is, Steve the Sniper. So maybe just like a five closest points. <laughs> Steve, Steve always, he's a sharpshooter with the coming through with the answers when I need it most. Um, so yeah, maybe more points. Uh, and then on the connect, just limiting it to like, this is how many legs you want to make. Creepy spiders. <laughs> yeah, I think some people have gone out, like you could really go full and build like an IK solver so that their joints are bending. Um, but ba so basically this is like footprint points and then the parent or the torso or node moves around so you can have stuff kind of crawling around. It's kind of like doing a flocking uh, crowd simulation kind of idea, I guess. Um, but I might leave that aside right now. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, you could do <laughs> It's just the only thing limiting is your uh, knowledge of Houdini and imagination but once you acquire enough knowledge you're you're uh, unbounded by your the only thing stopping you then is your imagination i did this a really long time ago before there was um um vex when it was like mostly just vops inside of houdini um, let me see. I did a, I did, I didn't have a good, as good of a, like sense of design or whatever, but I'd made like a table with legs that was kind of crawling around and, and walking and stuff. I think it was a long time ago. Yeah. So this, I kind of did like a breakdown of the process or whatever. Um, but it's the same idea as you have with this uh, point cloud that you generate that's like possible points that it can snap to. Um, and then it just looks like it's kind of when you hide the points or whatever, it looks like you have a thing walking around. All right. So I might try this. Um, maybe this set of points is going to be like corresponding to hairs. I'm trying to think what the best, the best way is to do this. All 
All right. Then I was doing this. I, I think I could still have the older file open. Um, so just doing this wrangle right here um, to get the root points, the vertex prim index function. Um, so the base of all of those hairs will be added to that root. Um, I'm actually just going to do a blast. How does that keep happening? <laughs> My pre precision is off today. Um, so we do root. We want it to be points. Open old projects, <laughs> copy paste nodes and wrangles. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the biggest reasons why I like to use wrangles is just because like <clears throat> it makes this process so reusable. Um, before I was doing more stuff <clears throat> in BOP networks, but it's harder to grab portions of that and like rewire it and stuff. Um, I guess in this circumstance, like I could have just copied and pasted the whole node, but so one of the best things of Houdini is like just the modular nature of it. You're always kind of making like miniature plugins or reusable tools, whether you take the time to make them fully into uh, like published um, digital assets. Yeah, I, I guess if I have a sub network. Um, I usually don't do it because I don't like to maintain a bunch of different tools and stuff. Sometimes I'll do it, but create digital asset and then you could share it. Like if you're working with a team of people, it makes more sense to, to work that way. So everyone's like synchronized on the same tool. Um, but just with the node based workflow, everything's super reusable. So now this is set to um, delete anything that isn't a root point or not uh, in the root group. So we have the base point cloud again. Um, doesn't have, I don't know if we can generate the P scale attribute with this. Doesn't look like I can, I can I'll just generate it using the attribute create. Um, set this to E scale. We could just start with something like that and see what happens. It's a bit slower. It seems like everything else is still working. The point separate. possible with the um, ray node right here if you reduce the scale to like 25 percent um, then the particle separation process kind of takes a higher priority for more precedence kind of um, so that should help the the points won't lie as closely on the surface of the rock but um your goal is is more just to have them not penetrating uh you could do that i guess you can also do um whoops 
Um, maybe just doing more sub steps. Just more sub steps to get more precision overall. All right, you guys know what <laughs> what's happening already. What the plan is? Um, no idea. <laughs> so, uh, German water is this German? I think it might be. Um, draw scener. This is just the, they just have this at Trader Joe's. But I guess Trader Joe's, I think that is the same company, um, that owns Aldi's. That, that's a German company, right? So their supply chain is all somewhat German centric. But yeah, this just at Trader Joe's for sparkling water. It's, I think it's like a dollar or dollar fifty or something for a, I, I'll just refill it after I have the initial seltzer. There's like too much gas to just be tossing <laughs> tossing back seltzers all day. But it's a good crisp taste. Um, so yeah, what, what my plan is with this is to... Um, this sim right here is going to be my pins. So this will be... The root points will be pulled along based off of these base pop nut and then I'll try a vellum uh, hair simulation so the the rest of this stuff can move around the Shermans are everywhere that's who owns Trader Joe's the Shermans so I'm doing enumerate here uh, based off of the points so this will store the index uh, for each point. And then even after I blast um, to just get to just keep only the roots, I'll still have the index. Um, and then I think I can do attribute copy. Yeah, I think the Shermans uh, with Trader Joe's, they, I don't think they have the best business practice, but it's the cheapest option. It's, it's either the Shermans or Bezos with Whole Foods. I don't have too many options. Or they, you just get the Amazon delivery at your door. One way or another, Amazon's selling you your groceries. Um, so I could get the point position and then match by the index attribute and uh, I think I can just apply this up here so now those base points are kind of parented to the that simulation so we're just driving the uh, Root, roots. Um, then I think just do a vellum hair configure. Um, we should be good because we already stored the root thin points. Root match animation. It's a bit slow for some reason. Doing a lot of stuff down there. I might have to reduce the point count of everything. But um, let's just see what happens. Yeah, I think this might be too slow for right now. 
generally just like setting things up at the start and testing it uh you want to be working pretty close to like real time We might want to add this rock as a collision, just so the, the rest of this stuff bounces off of it and doesn't go inside of it. You can just do that. As simple as connecting a wire. Um, probably want to turn off, I don't know, you leave gravity on for right now. Just try visualizing this stuff. <laughs> it's a hairy rock. <laughs> it's, at least it's not pasta. For right now. So I'm trying to think of something that's a bit more like soft body. Um, it's like a bit thicker maybe. All right, so I'm gonna do maybe even less, less of these um, with this base simulation. I'm gonna increase the P scale just so that they're more tightly constrained onto everything. I think to get rid of some of that stuff, like the jittering. Um, Sometimes in the past, I would do this, just decrease the update amount. So it's not trying to do the full, if you do the 100% update with a bunch of sub steps, you'll get the uh, instability because it's just like every iteration it's re, it's just popping. It's like incoherent. Basically the solution is, it will never converge on like a stable solution. So now I can make these thicker. Vegan nuts, <laughs> late to the party. Late to the hairy ball <laughs> party. Yeah, so I'm thinking maybe, um, cause this is like a rock to contrast it with a different type of material. Um, like the, Maybe to have these more like rubber balloons or something. Maybe do some more segments. <laughs> like to there. Might want to get rid of the gravity at this point. Yeah, and I don't know. I've like I've always tried to get to increase this edge length stuff. I've never had too much success with it. Seagull Rush, how's it going? So like increasing that edge length. Scale, this should be for the collisions. Let me double check. Um, does it change this width? That might be it. Is this width attribute needs to be changed on the points. Still doesn't change the width. Let me try doing it with um, this one. Let's 
see what happens. I think it's doing it better. Right? Definitely better than uh, before. This is frame 21. Could do it. Just disable it and then go back to that frame, same frame and uh, see what happens. Short pasta. <laughs> so I'm planning to do some some stuff um, kind of post. I don't know. This is looking a little bit better. Um, Penne. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm planning to do some stuff to get it still away from uh, the pasta. So I think doing bit more bend stiffness I'm trying to get closer to rubber or something like that um, and maybe turn off the gravity up here you might reduce the P scale so that these base simulation can clump up a little bit more <laughs> I think it's just vellum is it, it makes everything look like pasta because it's like you're always vi visualizing or, or looking at stuff with uniform um, radiuses and stuff like that so it always tends to, to just look like tubes. So it might be too much bend. Yeah, I don't know why that first frame is uh, that is snapping around a bit. Did this? And I don't know. Um. Yeah. So that's wire versus polywire. Um. Yeah. I mean, I'm just visualizing stuff. For, for speed right now, but you, with polywire, you would do have a bit more control over some things. Um, so I might switch to that. This wireframe in terms of playing back your results uh, is just quicker, like is kind of instantaneous to, to cook this. Um, it's like 38 milliseconds. Polywire could be better for the final, like actually starting to render and stuff. Um, yeah, but because you have to actually build like mesh connectivity and stuff, um, this is, right now is taking slightly longer. I could probably get away with doing it, but, um, they should be bouncing. The wires should be bouncing off of each other. So like this right here has uh, self collisions enabled and uh, I was playing around with the width and all that stuff and they should be they shouldn't be um, penetrating each other anywhere all right so yeah maybe these um, the poly wire is nice because you can do different radius like over the the um, length of the, the curves. So this resample um, I think we started with I'm just gonna leave it where it is. So I'm not gonna do any adjustments to the topology. I'll just store the curve view. Um, and then this 
curve you, I'm going to use it to drive uh, a new width for the curves. Just add the semicolon. So then with this polywire, you can do dollar sign width. Um, and it will actually use whatever this attribute value is. You could see right now it's just going from zero to one, or I've, I've scaled it from zero to z 0 0.01 at the tip. Um, but we could do a ramp instead. So now we have this control to change the thickness. I think I want to try something where they're like pretty thin throughout. And then there's just a specific notch or like kind of like a bulb or something like that. Kind of like little amoebas or more of like a coral, coral reef or something. We would look at that one. Uh, it's like, might have been Man vs. Machine or something that had the, the BBC title sequence that had some weird like organic stuff moving around. Uh, pressure to inflate them. You could, I'm, I'm doing everything just based off of curves, so it would be a bit, um, it'd be a bit of a, a new direction to, to transition everything to the cloth. Like it might slow down the simulation too much. So for right now, I'm just going to work, try to keep working quickly. Um, whoops. Shrooms. <laughs> I do subdivide. Get a bit more organic. They also look like something. <laughs> it's just everything looks like uh, weird stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, you could also do like a color maybe off, based off of the same ramp. Um, sperm. <laughs> yeah, it kind of looks like that, or even the rubber devices that catch the sperm has a, some of the same shape as well. <laughs> um, so switch this to a vector. And this is going to be a color. I'll just call it RGB. Um, then if you do this, gear you can do delete all spare parameters and that will get rid of the ramp um and then if you rebuild it oops hold on velvet come how's it going just need to update this the color all right so now we can adjust the the, the color of them um, I think this one, you, you have vertex textures that are built. Um, if you want even more control of the color, like you could do, uh, the, one of the U or V coordinates to get the, the radius around the, uh, the shape of these. Thanks for all the streams. Yeah. I'm happy to, to kind of show the, the process, answer questions to, uh, <laughs> Playthroughs, speedruns, battles. Would it, you have a question? You can already tell this shaded will look beautiful. I'm going to make a version that uses attribute paint and vex. You can paint these onto any shape. Yeah, that, that would be a really interesting way to work. Um, could also do like uh, collision. You have a question regarding collision. You could also do measure, um, maybe curvature or something. And uh, this looks a bit 
a bit odd. You might want to do smooth or something. But um, like growing these based off of curvature um, could be a cool idea as well. This kind of like uh, moss maybe just grows in areas that collect more moisture or something like that. So this curvature is kind of simulating that uh, idea. If you wanted perfect collisions, would you do an after a secondary simulation? Um, so I'm working pretty quickly. Like if this was for a hero um, shot, like the, the camera is going to be right here. Uh, what I might do is like rebuild this simulation with uh, proper tubes, maybe pressure um, and stuff like that to get perfect collisions. Um, so that you would get some like deformations as the things push up against each other. Um, but that would be like another day or two to, to go down that path of work. Um, for right now, what I might be able to do is like apply this thickness before the simulation. Um, and then the solver might respect the variable width along the curves. Um, so I could try that. That would be like a pretty quick thing. Um, you can always fix stuff post simulation. Um, if you do something based off of of vex, um, there's some some quick ways and stuff to do it. Where basically vex runs over each point, each point, and then uh, if you find like overlapping areas or penetrating areas, you can try to push them back out. Just kind of like a simple deformer or something. Um, so that would be another kind of quick quick test or quick result. But we, we could try doing, um, this is gonna be the quickest thing to test. I'm just gonna move this process to happen before the simulation. Um, so this width should be getting generated. On the Vellum Solver, if you go to the Visualize tab, um, you should be able to visualize the thickness. I don't know if this... I feel like maybe it's on the constraints. Let me just put down a null. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Might just be p-scale. Yeah, I think Vellum is only using p-scale. So I could just do rename first delete p-scale. And then rename width to p-scale. And then it looks like our <clears throat> variable collisions are interpreted properly. Uh, and then after the simulation, if I want, it just go the other way. Do P scale the width. Um, I guess maybe I'll just update this to P scale. See if it works. Possible. <clears throat> I need to multiply it by two. This is going a bit slow right now. I don't know if updating those uh, collision attributes made stuff go more slowly. You can do it maybe before uh, the animation gets applied. Let 
maybe I don't know those nodes shouldn't be too I guess this <clears throat> this one is the one that's actually adding the p-scale let me just try doing it this way it looks like that something I don't know could have just been too much moving around of attributes or something. Your CPU must be slowing you down. Yeah, the CPU isn't ideal for certain tasks. I, I've spent most of the money on the, the GPU. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think, I, I mean, I'll, I'll generally just try to make my simulations and stuff more optimized if they're CPU based. The Vellum solver does do some stuff with OpenCL, but it's not as good as a uh, optimization as um, Pyro. Like Pyro, you get the most gains from doing OpenCL. But it looks like the collisions are working more precise now. I guess it's just the subdivides and stuff that's a bit slower. It's better. Yeah, so I think for right now, this is basically just assigning the p-scale based off of this ramp. Um, got some some results. Houdini School, <laughs> good to see you back, back again. Thanks again for setting up the battle and everything uh, last, last evening. I don't know if maybe we try fast forwarding. Are you going to put little lights in the pods? That would look sweet. Um, it could be. I was yeah. It could be like little glowing points. Um, another idea I was thinking was like adjusting um, maybe either through refraction, refraction or opacity. Like it's more transparent where, where the bulbs or whatever are stretched out. So I was just fast forwarding or trying to fast forward to get to a point where um, there's more variation in the rocks. So like certain areas you could see just more contrast in like composition, I guess, or whatever. Um, so yeah, I'm starting to think already like pretty far into the stream so i'm starting to think about actually rendering or <laughs> making an image instead of doing technical nonsense it looks like the bend is still too too loose in some areas some i don't know if it's If you had longer ones come out and put lights only in those, it could be interesting. Yeah, I think for right now I'm I'm too uh, too pressed for time and need to just transition mainly into shading. But yeah, I think doing that or maybe even um, like spheres moving around this that are like pushing, like forcing stuff away from it. Um, that are doing lights, that could be a cool, like, addition to the, to the composition and stuff. But yeah, definitely having just, uh, I think right now if I put lights and everything, it's going to be too busy overall. Um, so yeah, maybe even just like a few of them that are really big or, or something. Um, so I might make this source E scale here a bit smaller. Um, so the reason I keep doing that is just to try to get more clustering of of the roots or the, the guides. Gotta know where to draw the line. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just for these, this is more of like quick sketches or R&D. Um, but so I don't know, sometimes I could extend and build off of them, but for the 
the majority of it for the Friday streams, I've been trying to kind of like com go from scratch to conclusion uh, with an idea just so it's like more entertaining for people to watch, I think. It's like you're, you're, you're actually producing something by the end of it. Some of my, uh, like last Wednesdays, you're just walking through stuff, but you just end and, and it's not, uh, nothing is made at the end of it, essentially. Um, so I was thinking about the stiffness, maybe increasing it even more. Um, trying to get like less, less of these that are laying uh, too flat, essentially. You've lurked a few times. It's always looked cool. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I just think from um, when I was learning Houdini and from that standpoint, it was always more frustrating to watch tutorials and stuff like that. And then like they might show you a picture that looks really cool at the start, but then by the end of it, you haven't made that or <laughs> is it just makes uh, from a learning perspective, it makes it more um, incentivized if you like are actually if you know for sure that you're going to be finishing with a, a cool result at least something happened the bees they got turned into bigger mushrooms i think i, I adjusted this too much we need nemo <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I think I just put a one in instead of the zero by mistake. So I just moved the time slider up to frame 76 or whatever. The reason I do that instead of just playing it is you save some time because you don't have to construct, like visualize the, it skips this step for, for the simulation or whatever up until that time. Yeah, I don't know. I think because these are so long, even though I'm letting them cluster up quite a bit, they're still, uh, They're still covering the rock quite a bit. I'm trying to think what I can do. Um, I might just do like with this hair gen. I'm just doing quick hacks. So I just do clip and just keep a portion of the rock. It was kind of like a paint. Quick quick way to do a paint sop or something like that. Um, I'm just trying to hack like less coverage of the the rock shape. Everything should go quicker with less curves as well. I don't know what this I might have messed something up with this. Sometimes you have to go like actually to frame one, reset the simulation. So this, I guess just because I did it by height, could be more interesting as well. Like they just grew on the top of the rock. go a bit further into the simulation. All right, I'm gonna do one more adjustment and then uh, start going into shading. So I'll just go back to the bend 
Uh, I'm going to decrease the stiffness. So I think now that I have less of them, if they uh, spread out more, it, it would get more interesting shapes and stuff. Originally, I was trying to have them be stiffer so that we could see through to the rock. But now, because uh, I, I cold like the source, propagation of them, I think it, it just looks more interesting to have them laying, getting swept or whatever. Makes them look like more dynamic. All right. Let's let's go. Put a camera down. I think this could be a good composition. I'll do a null node um, and then I'm going to use this just to send the rock to another geometry uh, network. Uh, so I'll keep this as my like amoeba anemone. And then this still has UV attributes. So the other um, texture maps, the color, all that I can pull it in and we'll get, it'll just look a little bit more detailed as well. Um, so yeah, let's just turn off the this fancy stuff for now and just set up the lighting and things with the hard surface geometry. What are you working on? Uh, so I've just been starting um, today making these like soft body vellum simulations, the, the kind of amoeba anemone stuff. Um, I did like a base particle simulation to move the pin points around the uh, surface of this rock. And then just some simple post-process deformations of them to give them like a bit of uh, profile or, or definition or whatever. So I'm just going in and rendering uh, now. Joao VFX, thank you for the tier one, for the two months. Been busy with work. You still in, you're still in Portugal? Thank you, June Poisson. Um, do a material and redshift material. Put it on the rock. Texture. I think I just, just kind of had a quick. I just use the shell sometimes to get paths. Still there. I feel like Portugal's, they've been doing pretty good with the pandemic and stuff. I went, I visited uh, Lisbon like a year, year and a half ago now or something like that. It was a lot of fun. Um, file name, just keep, keep going with that. Get the diffuse. Um, and then the normal map as well. Doing a lot of messy stuff? Oh no. Which can't be as messy as our government. For sure, right? At least you have the trains and stuff. You could move around the Eurozone pretty easily. 
we're I, we're all kind of stuck in uh yeah nothing compares <laughs> we're all kind of stuck in in the states They're, i've heard they they even closed the mexican border down to us for for cars like if i tried to drive to mexico right now they wouldn't let me out they're doing emergency mode 15 of September. They let a party of 20,000 people for the weekend. <laughs> France, I heard, was starting to go into the pretty heavy lockdown again. Like uh, they did at the start where you need the paper or permission slip or whatever to, to get groceries or whatever. But I, I don't know. I mean, I think it makes sense. To, to do it if uh, if it's just for a brief period, but it's like better to just get, eradicate it. What I, I heard in Portugal, like a month ago, I heard that they were letting people back into bars and clubs. You couldn't dance, but you, you could only be seated, but you could still go and like listen to music and stuff. So this normal map, um, I think I just put it into bump typically, and do it that way. So we'll put a light, just start with like a rim, rim light. You can only sit down and drink as an only non-alcoholic. That doesn't matter with the, it, sh it should only be Pure vodka, that would be like more sanitary, right? Because it's already, uh, would already kill the, <laughs> the virus. All right, it's just direct sanitizer. <laughs> um, <laughs> do the red shifts. Render view. See what happens with the material. Redshift RT. <laughs> Hopefully soon. I feel like even just to, if the when they start to build out, like it's already supported with Solaris or with uh, Hydra with Karma. Um, SIGGRAPH might still be happening, I'm not sure. They're still doing some presentations and stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna do... I think the biggest thing was just to load the rock geometry, like it was quite heavy mesh for the, the GPU or whatever. I'm gonna try adding the bounce light. Um, yeah, and then I think just a more overhead version of the light. Known for the hardcore liquors, transforming alcohol into gel. <laughs> Most of them smell like wine. It's like the port, port wine. That's pretty sugary though, right? All right, I think it's too specular right now it's hard to know how well that normal map is working port yeah it is amazing i've there's certain ones that i had that uh the really dry ones i, I was a big fan of them Certain ones, it was like it just instantly t takes all the moisture out of your mouth. It's like the first sip that you take. You guys love that stuff. My uncle, I have a kind of half uncle in my family. He owned a vineyard in uh, in Portugal. And like a couple of years ago, he broke out this bottle of port from 1945 i think and we we drank it it was like super super good it was like um 
the cork like disintegrated as soon as he you try to uncork it and you have to like strain it through <laughs> cheesecloth and stuff let the man work <laughs> all right we have this normal map maybe i'll just try flip y i remember i had to do that before with uh some assets no, it's okay. Yeah, it's, I, <laughs> if I need to get get back to work, I would just uh, stop <laughs> stop farming chat. I think it makes it a bit interesting. So maybe just start with this right now for the rock. Um, Trying to think the very spec roughness with some noise. Wasn't it, didn't it come with uh, the spec roughness? Look at that. It can even be extra, extra. Or so this would be intensity, I guess. Right? But this is meant for roughness. Let's see what, it, see what happens. So I think we want to turn off the sRGB stuff. I don't know. I guess they're saying that they really want it to be a pretty rough rock. But this is already looking a bit better, right? Maybe my uh, IOR. What do you think? I think the normal, I don't need, I shouldn't be flipping it. Um, I think it's looking somewhat rocky. Uh, I might try the color correction just on the main. There's no tessellation. You think I need it for the normal map to have it show a bit more detail? It's a, not a better idea to plug texture map with normal map and then use tangent space normal. I think normal map seems better. Is that what I'm doing? I'm, I think it's a tangent space normal, right? I have a hard time verifying it, but um, I believe it's, I mean, we could try disconnecting. Dory Splash. I'll try to, let me progress a little bit more with this. I'll, I'll try to get to it in a little bit. Um, forget Mantra. <laughs> I don't know, Mantra is, it can be, I guess with, I don't know, it, it can be all right with uh, with oceans. But yeah, what I was thinking is like, just at, based off of attributes, even just the Y position or something like that, um, I, that would increase the refraction roughness of it. Um, there's other things you can do as well with like putting a volume inside of things, but basically just doing a bit of hacking with um, the shading stuff in the shader. You're just simulating like there's a bunch of bubbles or, or something that's making brightness inside of it. Um, yeah, so doing it with um, the whitewater stuff is like, 
the brute force method with bump you can control the amount of a height scale in some cases it helps I'll, I'll try that um when i go back into the rock shader i think i know what you're saying now the uh redshift makes it a bit confusing with that stuff i think but yeah i forgot that the the displacement node has that setting um so i'm just gonna try to do some something close to like rubber or something for these maybe I don't know, it's moving over to like aluminum, I think. I think I want to start with the plastic. Just increase the IOR for right now. Um, yeah, I mean, mantras can be nice, especially with with oceans like you get pretty high resolution meshes like it gets pretty it's almost too much geometry for the the gpu renders to work on so sometimes mantra is really good for for big ocean simulations um i think this light needs a bit of a adjustment Something like that, maybe. Yeah, so on the, you're saying displacement, um, switch this to vector tangent, and then um, do it RS texture, no color space override, just linear color space, um, and then put this into bump, right? Yeah, mantra for animations is a bit difficult to do at home if you just have one computer. If you have a render farm or a facility that's that's doing it. So yeah, I think this is looking a bit better. Texture to bump map. Oh, you you think bump instead of uh, displacement? They might be doing the same thing, but I'll, I'll give it a try. Look, does look different. This one or this one? This looks a bit like an artifact. I might go back to the first one. <laughs> I don't know. 30 machine render farm just for mantra. It's just a pain to bake IFDs and wait 30 minutes for a single noisy frame. Increase the height scale. Um, you think my height scale. Yeah, with the mantra, like rendering this kind of stuff, the one thing I would do is just limit the... Uh, reflection and refractions like that would be the first thing that would be slowing it down quite a bit um i would start with like two and two for refle reflections ref reflections and refractions um you should get a bit more speed up with less noise or whatever with that yeah the mega scans i didn't have my um My subscription wasn't working or whatever today, but I, I do know that they have the, um, I think this is okay for right now. The object space normal. Uh, is this it? Was suggesting tangent space? Ah, uh, so I think this one I did switch. That's probably what the, where that difference was coming from. Otherwise, these nodes might be doing the same thing under the, uh, I don't know. 
But yeah, I think it's okay for right now for this. Yeah, so you could do a volume inside of it. Um, you could even just make a big volume that's above the ocean. And then if you just make it only visible in refractions, then you'll kind of get this stuff for free, if that makes sense. So basically, the for primary rays, the volume is invisible, but it just shows up for the refraction of the, the through the water. The stream is breaking up for you, sadly. Oh no. My bitrate seems good. Is it is it effing for anyone else? <laughs> Actual five head. Um. Yeah, I don't know. You could try refreshing your Twitch UI, the Twitch page, perhaps, and sometimes that will. Uh, their I think their player is a bit coded poorly or something. Um. All right. I'm gonna try to push push forward a little bit. I think it could be just whack that saturation up. It, all the colors happening. Um, 100% here in slow <laughs> old Idaho. So maybe some more roughness. Um, yeah, so the one thing I was thinking for like rubber, um, like I was trying to think about doing different ways to get the transparency. So like, you do refraction with less roughness. Something like that is kind of simulating the stretching. Um, so if I if I use an attribute and blend between those, you kind of make the, the tips of this look like they're blending. Um, I think the subsurface will help as well. On 3G phone app, <laughs> it might be the network. I don't. Sometimes the Twitch app is a bit uh, prob causes issues as well. So just adding subsurface here to try to get these feeling a bit more organic or whatever. How do you add these ones to these guys? You just typed in the number one. <laughs> Yeah, I think this, this, oh, it worked. Yeah, yeah, that's a bit of a, a hack, a gem perhaps. Um, to donut. <laughs> oh, this, ah, two bits. Thank you, thank you. I, I was confused, <laughs> I'm too much of a boomer. I'm not doing the renders in Houdini, but Joao is talking, he's doing some renders in Mantra. Yeah, there's just one light right now. I'm looking through the light in the viewport. Um, I might, I think I went a bit too, too hammer with this saturation. The GI is on, I might add a bounce card. Um, so sometimes I've done that. Thank you for the 100 bits, Joao. Wait, is one? You meant to do three? Um, so I see two bits from one minute ago and 100 bits from one second ago. <laughs> Bezos is short, short change in the bits. Bitsos. <laughs> 
300. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe my my OBS is messed up. Yeah, I think so. It's, I think the crypto. I said it's a Twitch-based donation kind of currency. Um, so it's just equates to currency, like US dollars, essentially, or whatever streamers currency is. You could look it up. It's just a Twitch-based thing. It doesn't follow the crypto markets. Um, but I, I appreciate the <laughs> the donation, Joao. Thank you. Um, it's a pyramid scheme. <laughs> Amazon is a pyramid scheme. Capitalism is a, <laughs> a pyramid scheme. Um, so this grid just set it up like a bounce light. Um, what I do with that is I'll just go invisibility and turn off primary ray visibility. And then you can use it to uh, bounce or kick, kick some light back into things. Um, so without it, with it, might not have updated right away. Have to do top level updates maybe. Refresh. Maybe it's just too far away now. Yeah, you can see it's kicking a little bit of, of light back into things. Maybe I'll just look at the camera again. I think it's a bit more interesting to see the whole shape. You get a little bit less, uh, you get away with some of the, some less detail on the rock maybe. back to a rim <laughs> it's cheating just to make it look like it's more polished than it is all right so i'm gonna go into the uh, anemone stuff um and this is setting the color right now we aren't using the color in the shader yet um, what I'm going to do is just use this as a way to, to adjust the, uh, opacity or use this as a blend between the two different shaders. So white is going to blend into a different style shader. Let's move it. Let it go a bit. Might not have enough resolution in my uh, in my shape. I'm doing this like before it gets uh, subdivided. This should be good. So if I go just organize this a bit. This is the rock. This is the. I feel like that's not the correct spelling. Velik Kam, <laughs> thank you for the 100 bits. Getting in on the Ponzi scheme, are you? <laughs> Alright, so I think that's the right spelling. Um, right at the bottom. Yeah, it shows up in the chat UI. Uh, there should be a button or like a, a pane or whatever to, to click it. Um, 
And I think just do points attribute, set it to color, and uh, I'm gonna make another material. I'll just set up the second material. The see-through, less roughness. I don't know if the subsurface if it could be okay to still have it tinted a little bit. I don't know. It could just be adding too much noise to everything. Alright, so this is going to be like the stretched state, essentially. And just do Material Blender. Base. Might, this one we might want to actually have the base, and then this is layer one. Might have to reset. So it looks like my value here is switched around. We just do change range. We're just flipping it around. Now it looks like we're getting it stretching a little bit. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was, I'm expecting trying to get it a little bit better. I think I want it um, more roughness and uh, you just go back to the attribute and maybe just stretch it out a bit more. I'm just gonna do this to kind of make it, uh, it's kind of like doing a gamma, just to make sure that it's at the full value of one or, or more. There, it looks a bit better now, kind of like a balloon stretched out or something. I think I moved the light at one point. I definitely wanted it more like a rim. You see the Arnold render underwater one? Um, I. I don't know which Arnold one you're talking about. I've seen too many renders recently to <laughs> to remember them all. Yeah, I, I think I did. I saw this maybe on Twitter or something. Yeah, it ended up looking really cool. All right, so I think my IOR is too, too high. 
like it was you you boost it too high and it, you don't see through it just turns more into a mirror surface kind of um now it's more like a more transparent in some areas i don't know if this color instead of white you could do it a bit of a red that's still like stretched just a bit desaturated or not fully white I don't know with this rock. Might try adding uh, another color in. I feel like just a two-tone, you could just get colors that are more interesting, contrasted against each other. Maybe just mixing it in a little bit, you just get like a desaturated rock. It's cooler. Cooler temperature and looks cooler as well. Um, and maybe do the classic backdrop grid bend 90 boom <laughs> there it is it's like the hack of a studio backdrop um just subdivide it to give it a bit of smoothness and then reposition it to uh, put it into view. I think it's just blocking the light. Oh, see what's going on know how that happened. Do it like this. I guess this bounce light is messing it up making it look pretty weird. <laughs> you make everything look so easy. It's just doing it so many times is like muscle memory or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this diagonal line kind of adds a bit of interest, but um, might just add another light. Well back. <laughs> Thank you for the hundred bits. Doubling up. The the dono king climbing up the ladder. <laughs> climbing the leaderboard. I'm just using this secondary light here to mainly hit the backdrop this one has come up clean and cool yeah thank you it's a bit of a improvement for last week it was a bit of a blunder <laughs> all 
Alright, so I think maybe this extra light would just knock it down to stop. This backdrop here is the default <laughs> cool zone gem. This is a, a lot of gems extracted today in the cool zone. Um, so the default backdrop, the default material with red redshift is very close to a mirror. So you always get that. Um, I think like paper, like the classic photographer's backgrounds, there's a bit more roughness in it like construction paper or whatever they're using. A bit interesting, it does. Holy squad! <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I don't know this. The rock is a bit low res looking. Um, I might just move this light around. I'm just balancing like the exposure of things. Small noise displacement on the rock. Yeah, that could help quite a bit. Uh, just the maxon noise. I don't know. Um, Gray rock is better than yellow rock. Yeah, the green, the, but it was a bit too. The colors weren't weren't working well together with the moss or whatever shader. So yeah, I think this shape. I was just making like sometimes the mesh is too dense and it doesn't displace well. This should be okay. Um, just start with a bit more displacement detail. Um, you can turn off that stuff just to, to render more quickly. Um, yeah, and then sometimes I was, this was a, chip, a tip someone gave me to switch to wireframe. Um, maybe before that, I'm just gonna go visualize the noise. So this is going to be the height kind of map of the displacement. I don't know, these names are always, um, I never <laughs> keep track of it. I think other people have made like a cheat sheet for these that might be pretty handy. Maybe the Poxo. I don't know. Naki. Could be nice. I guess maybe doing like curvature. I don't know if that's going to be too slow. I'm, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I think for displacement, I want to do change range because like the white area is what uh, what will get pushed outwards. Maybe my contrasts goes the other way. 
trying to like get just less uh less areas that are getting displaced I don't know. Let's do a power. Adjust the high and low clip on the noise. That might be it. I'm not sure if that's the same. I don't I don't really want them clamping. Um I'm trying to preserve like the range of them, but just have it uh that makes sense. Like, I'm just trying to... Yeah, it's kind of more of a... That's why I went over to contrast, but I'm not sure how they've implemented this contrast. It might not be, like, the same as the power. Um, I don't know. Let's try just flipping this around again. just start checking it out with displacement go back to the surface actually I'm just gonna do wireframe and uh, displacement and I think because this is the highest is going to be one but I'm working at a smaller scale just make that lower you can do negative one. Uh, I think I want zero. But I don't want to move the black area. See what happens. So the wireframe is helpful. Um, you can just make sure that your tessellation settings and stuff like that are working nicely and it looks like they are. Sometimes you have too low of a resolution and you're not visualizing like the actual displacement amount properly. I think I just am moving it too, too far. All right, that's looking a little bit more rocky. Looking cool. Maybe you do want this uh, going in a little bit. I don't know. I think it was a bit better. Kind of bulky. I think it's good. Turn, turn our anemones back on. So yeah, the displacement just makes sure that it's, you kind of have swaths of area that I have like render time detail. So it doesn't look like a low resolution asset as much. All right. I might just, start to dial the settings. I usually just kind of multiply that up quite high and then uh, reduce the noise threshold a little bit if I'm doing a still. So like 0 0.002 if you were to like print this out or you wanted like really, really high quality, 0 0.006 is like good, good enough. And so see there's the subsurface is making a bit of noise. And I think I'm gonna go uh, into my anemones and increase the subdivision. 
you'd see a bit of issues with it there. So yeah, that extra iteration of subdivision just makes it look a bit more organic. I think I went a bit uh, too too aggressive here with this. Uh, for, for time limitations and stuff, I'm going to go a bit higher with the noise threshold. So maybe doing this black crush threshold before is just looking like a bit too um, just it makes it look a bit more professional or something. Was this the, Velvic? Did you make the that underwater one? The anemones? So the black crush, you just kind of hide some areas? No. <laughs> The breakdown part is really nicely done. I think that's sometimes the best part for portfolios and stuff is just making really nice breakdowns. Like showing all the, especially for effects, like source particles, all that stuff is really cool. Maybe it's the comp. The comp work for it as well, like the color correction and everything is underwater, I think takes a lot of comp skills because you just need to, it's a lot of tricks and stuff. <laughs> Doesn't that look like sperm? It does look a bit like sperm. Um, it looks a bit... Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm just going kind of goofy, organic. One of the... Uh, <laughs> one of the constant inspirations of mine, of, I've mentioned it before, but it's the... Uh, forget their name. Zeitgeist. Some of their stuff looks a bit not not their re recent stuff, but some of the older, like more organic stuff. Um, just kind of thinking like very simple kind of geometric shapes. But yeah, you do end up with a lot of <laughs> I don't know blobbies or stuff that looks like. Pasta or sperm or stuff like that. But yeah, I think that their work is really cool. The way that uh, it's like somewhat balancing like realistic textures and stuff like that with abstract uh, shapes is, is really cool. They're always kind of on my radar as like style guide or inspiration or stuff like that. Shades of Orange, <laughs> good to see you. I think my saturation is a bit too much. Sometimes these LUTs, the Redshift has, I don't know about all of them, but uh, this is like, <laughs> cool. Do you ever use Lightroom? They have the uh, like Visco. There's different companies or whatever that make filters. Um, sometimes you can find some of these. I don't know. Sometimes it's a bit just too much like Instagram filters. Randomly applying LUTs. Yeah, it's kind of, I'm viewing this as kind of like the, it's like a style guide process. If you're 
just figuring out what the project is going to look like, you can be a lot more sloppy because uh, you're basically just trying to make an interesting image and then you would kind of like go back properly and uh, recreate it as much as you can in, yeah, it's basically just quick, quick kind of like color corrections or different looks essentially. Yeah, I don't know, I might have messed up. This material it feels a bit weird in some places. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. You guys are, are liking it more than I am, I think. Um, just seems a bit too contrasty for, for whatever reason. I think my lights or something. You going for a 30XX card? Yeah, I might. I was thinking about the one that's, there was like one that was an $800 price point or something like that. Um, not the full beast mode one, but just one to speed up redshift rendering. Like 3080, yeah, I think that was the one. Um, seems like it should be twice as fast as a 2080 for redshift. Just looking at like the gaming benchmarks and not anything too precise, but... Um, if I was to guess, it might be like one and a half or two times faster than a, a 2080. But for the same price as a 24 gigabyte. Yeah, yeah. for, for other people that are using it for OpenCL, it'd be really good for pyro work. For me, it, it does, I'm not too worried about the memory. Um, just because I already have the, the main, you can only use one for OpenCL. So it's just whichever one is the, the most. But yeah, I'm probably going to leave it here for today. This one will be um, saved. 